All right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Nuestra Life Podcast. I am your host, Eduardo, Mr. Vargas23 on Instagram. My special guest here today is Mr. Paul Conway. How you doing, sir? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? I'm doing very good, man. We were just talking off off the air before we started recording. Where you're gonna be? You're also a musician. You're gonna be playing here shortly when uh, tomorrow, right? You're gonna be playing at the Blue Lagoon. Yeah, Santa tomorrow. Cruz. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's our first show of the year that's well not really first but more like in santa cruz area we okay. had a show possibly like a month ago now um over here at the elkhorn brewery or the slough brewery uh here in watsonville off the of airport area okay and that was pretty cool because we got it like a a theme with it with uh it was my only band that was playing and uh, we had uh, vendors out there that are selling like games, toys, all that kind of stuff. So it was kind of like a little retro kind of gaming. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So it was so pretty kind of like a little sick. like a little pop up culture pop up type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it was it was pretty cool and everything, you know, so it was like I, I, I had a little issues with them because they're kind of like trying to like um, not let us have free range as much. Mm-hmm to where we can invite people and when we mention the things that they do they were like right away canceling it no 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 and i'm like well why <laughs> yeah and you would think they would it, want more people there yeah yeah like uh we had a well my friend our friend uh she does henna tattoos and okay. i know there's other people that do that but i'm thinking they they must have mistaken her for someone else and and that's probably what it is and i'm kind of hoping i'm kind of sticking to that because they also answered well she can't do it because she's not hindu and I'm oh like, really all right so you're you're, yeah. you're 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 canceling the culture of learning how to you know experience different cultures then right that's what right. you're trying to tell me and they're like no 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 it's just that we don't want her to come over and i'm like okay like it doesn't make sense so like they never really explain it so i'm just assuming that they just mistaken her for someone else so it's it's a crazy world out there man <laughs> yeah 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 and so what time do you guys actually uh well first of all what kind of music is it? it's uh i guess like so, i called earlier mosh pit music <laughs> uh it, it it depends on the song actually okay. uh so i had a band before that was straight out like heavy metal thrash and style mm -hmm. uh you know we have to, i co-founded the band uh since like 2007 or 8 that's uh, 2008 and yeah. uh been with this band up until like 20 damn, uh probably 2018 i i departed from them okay and uh it was just that's all it was and for the whole like four years i haven't been uh able to have a band or anything and a buddy of mine who's a singer alfred he hit me up say hey i want to do a band i want to do something different uh not just like metal i want to just do something different so i'm like all right so he kind of explained it and i'm like oh so you mean like 311 style you know like a reggae rock kind of thing oh, okay like, that's well. cool yeah so he's like he's like similar similar i'm yeah, like okay yeah, yeah. So our style pretty much is like between reggae, punk, uh, metal, uh, 80s type of rock, heavy metal, black metal, all into like one type of song sometimes, you know, and mm -hmm. like there's like you, you'll kind of hear it um, where it sounds reggae, but then it turns into like a ska at the same time. And then it turns into like a heavy metal breakdown and then goes back to a different style again <laughs> so it's like it, it we're just an experiment type of band that puts everything together at once so it's kind of like what i like to say is like my band is like baskin robbins we have 31 flavors for you <laughs> in one song you know yeah 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 you, you you touch everybody's genre everybody's liking and stuff yeah, so where, yeah. where can we where can we listen to some of the music is it uh uh like is it on apple is it on youtube because my wife uh, my wife loves the uh like ska music and yeah, yeah. So she's been showing me a little bit here and there. And there's actually going to be a couple people or a couple groups performing here in the Bay Area shortly. 
and uh we were looking at maybe going and checking them out or or but we she likes listening to that and she's trying to get me into it so the fact that you guys have that style in there i'm pretty yeah. sure we'll, we'll probably end up like liking your guys's music too yeah uh we don't have anything recorded yet okay uh see we, this is a brand new uh band that we kind of started out late on 2019 mm-hmm. and then 2020 happened <laughs> so but we still played we still uh, we stood that whole year um practicing making right uh writing music mm-hmm. and also having like private garage shows and everything you know on covid but we actually like checked on people we made they did the temperature checks we make sure that the town that if you're going to come wear a mask all that stuff we did all the whole guidelines mm-hmm. things too to make sure people don't come here sick and also leaving out you know healthy right so yeah it it took a toll on us on that but uh yeah we're definitely going to still be trying to record uh, our music pretty soon. I think we're going to do like a quick little demo, like maybe one or two tracks onto there. But uh, yeah, it, it's this right now is probably going to be after this show. We're going to have some more time and, and go over everything. So it's going to so be, you, a- you can kind of say that this show is going to be the exclusive, uh, I guess in a way, uh, well, it wouldn't be, a, I guess a, kind of in a way in a premiere, right. For, for a lot of people that d- didn't get to go to those garage shows and, and all the yes. other stuff so the viewing so this is going to be even big thing so everybody needs to go hey where where are they going to be able to get the tickets is there somewhere online they can get tickets to go to that uh uh for the blue lagoon uh no you don't need to you could just come in uh oh, okay. i think it's a ten dollars at the second entrance mm-hmm. so there's the first entrance where everybody goes through the bar area and then there's uh two rooms in the back and the first room that's straight away is like a dance hall Okay. And then the next one's on your right. And that's, uh, that's where all the shows and everything performers, they, sometimes we'll have a bartender there because there is a bar there. So it just, it, it's $10 on that second entrance on mm-hmm. that point, because they will have someone there, you know, stamping on you to, to know that you are, you already you, paid. You paid to, you're, yeah. You have access to get back there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that, that's cool. So it's, it's going to be, we're talking offline again. We were, it was, it's three bands that are going to be playing. Are they, do you know, are they also new or are they, have they've been around too? Uh, from what I did a little research on was uh, one band, which was London down that they, the ones that hit us up and asked to play for the show. And uh, they, they're an older band. They're definitely okay. an older band. Like they were in college when I was born. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so they've so been I, around. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, uh, I was born in 85 so it was like okay. damn like to be playing that much and you know it's like okay that's that's pretty cool you know they still have the passion for the music they're very uh 80s slash like punk style you know like okay. uh, like the clash and um the who kind of kind of a way and i was like oh, all right you know that's it's pretty cool um but the other band i i I just try to listen to some of their tracks, but the thing is that these two bands, they didn't have much variety on their Facebook. Okay. Uh, they didn't have much videos. They're just very little short clips. And I was like, Oh, okay. You know, they're kind of like a teasing on this whole way, but you know, I, I wish I could have heard more. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, uh, but for what I could say, I think our, my music, my band's music is a little heavier than theirs okay a little heavier just so a little gonna heavier. be it's gonna be different just different type of uh of, of a volume of, of music types and like some yeah an older veteran co- group and then now you guys and you guys coming in even though like yeah. you said you've played before but it's it's a new it's a new group of guys and you guys yeah. gonna be premiering that that's kind of cool you I, well i hope the best for you guys to show man it's, it's gonna be a thursday it's gonna be in santa cruz at the blue lagoon i'll get more information from you later and we'll be able to post that up there for people to go and check you guys out but awesome. uh Moving a little bit further from music, man. I know you guys from the Cinema Space podcast. I just had a I just had a podcast episode with Aaron, and I don't know if okay. you, I don't know if you got a little listening to it. We were uh, I did. <laughs> yeah, we were we were talking about you know his love for horror and and film, and he was telling me that you you and Johnny knew each other for way before you guys got all together. Yeah, where, where did your love for for the horror? The horror scene horror film because i know you were in vegas this last couple couple days i guess a couple weeks ago maybe yeah you were at what, what was it called it was a 30 or 30 it was uh 
the days of the dead the days, days of, of the, the dead. dead okay yeah and i'm not gonna yeah, lie i saw uh, those pictures and i knew none of those people that were there i didn't <laughs> <laughs> me personally man i i like movies it's just when i was younger man i wasn't really into horror movies yeah uh, i was into the action and comedy and never was really into horror the, i think the the i guess gruesomest movie i've ever seen that i that i enjoyed what was horror was jeepers creepers that was pretty much where oh, i was okay. like that's good enough for me i was like this is <laughs> yeah i'm not watching all this other stuff and yeah and, yeah but, but where did that come from for you where did the love for that for that genre come from Oh man, I it was early on in my life, man. Like I think I remember watching my my very first horror movie was uh, Nightmare on Elm Street okay. uh, when I was a kid, and it, that movie came out in 80, 84. And by the time I saw it, it was like close to the nineties, maybe like 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 eighty nine or ninety. Mm-hmm. Um, and my dad put it on as a punishment for me. <laughs> and he was, he was like, you know what? You're getting out of hand. We're going to watch a movie. And I'm like, all right, mm-hmm. whatever, you know, all this stuff. And then like seeing that first kill happen, I was like glued to the, to the screen or, or back then was what we call the box TVs, <laughs> right. the, tube. <laughs> the tubes. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I was just like freaked out to the fact that like i was amazed by the movie but i was also scared as shit you know like mm-hmm. like to be crazy because like this dude attacked you in your dreams when you're most vulnerable and then I, I used to have nightmares about it and everything but then as t- that time goes on after that movie i've been curious to see more and more i started watching hellraiser started watching the killer clowns from outer space and like the evil dead movies and it just continued on and on and on you know mm-hmm. aliens you know predator it's like so much of this stuff out there and it's like i every time i see it i would get scared but then like i would be like okay you know that's i get it i get it you know like i understood it was it. a movie yeah but, yeah but you also wanted but, to see how how more it can expand how much more gruesome it can yeah get. What, what, yeah yeah I, I remember watching some stuff and then i would be like how is this even allowed to be on tv you know think thinking <laughs> thinking it was real you know and then yeah. end up figuring out it's just a movie but then it's like how are they allowing so much stuff to just you know i've seen clips i've i'm gonna be honest i've never seen the full of any of the uh nightmare on elm street i've never seen any of the full of uh halloween Oh, okay. We have the Friday the 13th. I've never seen, I've seen clips. I've seen parts of it. I've never seen it full. Um, and it's just like, I see some of that stuff and it's just, I mean, now I'll probably watch it now, but yeah, before yeah. man, I'd just be like, this is just way too crazy. It's like, how is this stuff allowed? Like, I felt like this is probably not even right for me to even be watching this stuff. <laughs> It'd be illegal for me to be seeing this. And I thought my parents would get in trouble if they, yeah. if the, the government or the police found out that they were showing me this stuff <laughs> and ended up and that was always my excuse i never wanted to be like oh, i was just too scared to watch it and then be like nah my parents yeah. you know i didn't want to get my parents in trouble but a yeah. lot of it was that you know back in the day we were we were scared pretty pretty easily but that's why yeah. for me it's it's interesting to know people that really love that genre like they get really yeah. into it yeah yeah i i it me it's more like the killings, how creative they can go for and like how unexpected it, it could be. And, and then most of the majority is, is the, the storyline too, you know, like mm-hmm. the story has to sell you out. And even though you, the story may suck in the movie, but you still kind of get what they're trying to go for. It's like, Oh, it was there, but they didn't succeed in it. And, it, mm-hmm. but you still like it. It's a guilty pleasure kind of a thing, you know, but like, I mean, I was, I was always in the horror movies and I was always in the comedy movies okay. like all the time with Jim's Carrey, you know, mm-hmm. just doing his thing, you know, like, uh, was the first time I, I saw Jim Carrey was in the movie Peggy Sue. Uh, it's a old movie with yeah, Nicholas I don't think I've Cage. Seen that one. Yeah. I think it's, uh, what's new Peggy Sue or something like that, but it's Peggy Sue. I think I saw the, on the Disney channel. And he was like a third grade character, like like a third rate character. Okay. And uh, yeah. he was he was the funny dude in the group, you know. And it's about this lady who calls her, her who's uh, 
in a coma and she's remembering her past love and everything, which was Nicolas Cage uh-huh. and Nicolas Cage's best friend was with Jim Carrey. And he was like the goofy guy. And he was doing all the stuff that we saw Jim Carrey do and in living color. Okay. So I was like, all right, you know, like I'm, you know, like that guy was pretty funny. And then next thing you know, he's on these movies, like the mask, you know, the Ace Ventura movies. Um, yeah. I mean, like anything that had Jim Carrey in it, I wanted to watch, you know, and same thing with like Adam Sandler, uh, even Rob Schneider, even though like these movies are like people kind of like, Oh, it's just another Adam Sandler movie or another, this, but they're all classic typical thing. Yeah. It, they're still yeah. classics. Dude. I'm a huge <laughs> fan of Rob Schneider. I like when he did the, uh, the animal, the animal. Yeah. Was really yeah. Good. That, that was one of my favorite ones. The, uh, hot chick hot chick was dude i was cracking <laughs> up when i seen hot chicks yeah uh, you know he's deuce bigelow deuce bigelow then and then <laughs> deuce bigelow two european gigolo that that yeah. dude, those that's so crazy but touching on jim carrey a little bit did you ever get to watch uh the number 23 yes i think that yeah. was probably for me when i was watching because I, I like jim carrey too i saw zay's venturas i even saw the spinoff of the 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 younger version of jim carrey doing the the pet detective oh um, yeah yeah but the number 23 and the cable guy those are the two movies for me where i was like this dude's really expanding from comedy to to a different to more serious serious thing and for me the number yeah. 23 is definitely up there in, in at least my top 10 top 20 movies of all time yeah. that i enjoy and yeah I thought that was yeah pretty, pretty intense movie yeah, the 23 uh, was a diff- definitely a different take on him because even though he did the, uh, what was that, um, Man on the Moon before, mm-hmm. like he he was like just in a different mindset. And that's the reason why I like this movie because he was completely different from how he was. I mean, we did get a taste of his like horror style with uh, the cable guy. You know, especially yeah. the whole dream sequence, you know, he's like ramming into the door and going all crazy. And like, I was like, oh, shit, like this, <laughs> it's he a could trip. be doing good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, then when 23 came out, I was like, OK, you know, like I liked how he, he was serious to it. He wasn't trying to break so much character out from being funny. And that's what sold me for that movie. And then like the whole rest of it was like, oh, okay. You know, like I understand what they're trying to do a whole conspiracy theory mm-hmm. thing that kind of gone wrong. And, you know, the government's involved and, and the satanic Illuminati shit's all involved in this whole thing. And I'm like, oh, all right. You know, like I, I get the concepts of the movie yeah. and everything. A lot of, not a lot of people liked it, I guess, because they expected some more stuff from it, but yeah that's what you kind of get for like expect having high hopes on something. And then it turns out to be different. I learned that the hard way a lot. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, that yeah. movie alone is what got me into conspiracy theories. I love conspiracy yeah. theories. I don't care if they're crazy or they actually do seem legit. I'm, yeah. I, I would love to hear a conspiracy theory and then I'll give my two cents if I can. But that movie alone, man, it got me, it blew my mind, not just yeah. the acting, but everything that was on there from, historical facts they were stating and then they were doing everything that would come back to the move to the number 23 and stuff like that man i i i, I like those stuff um yeah. how do you feel about when movies when 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 horror movies end up um i forgot the word is when you, you know, when you see like a cartoon show or something from like they did with the simpsons and, and family guy and like a crossover how do you oh, feel cross- like when they do it for for horror movies like they did freddy versus jason how was your take on uh, that Freddy versus Jason. I uh, honestly, I was really hyped for it because this is like a thing that I've been wanting since uh, Jason goes to hell. Because we got that teaser at the end where they destroy Jason and his mask. After panning off from the ending of the movie, they pan off and they show Jason's mask on the floor, and then pops up Freddy Krueger's glove and then grabs right. it and then drinks it to hell. And once I saw that, I'm like, oh fuck okay yes and then yeah. then they start doing the comic books freddy's versus jason and then they added freddy versus jason versus ash and it was like oh fuck okay like they they met they're writing about it these guys want to do it they have to like make this movie and yeah the movie has a little like down ups and downs with it 
But I mean, it, it's a, it's a pretty good movie and that's the best we're ever going to get right now. Cause I don't think we're ever going to get a sequel or anything like that. Okay. But, that's what I was about um, to ask. Did they ever make a second one? Cause I don't remember. I don't remember seeing a number two for that movie. No, they, they thought about it, but since it, it did pretty good on the box office because mm-hmm. a lot of people wanted to see this fight happen. And I think most of the majority was the fact that there wasn't that much fighting between them two. And mm-hmm. uh, they felt that the characters uh, that are the good people were kind of misused a lot and yeah. they made them seem a lot dumber than they are. And I, I, I mean, I, I get it. They, they even brought some old classic stuff, like classic Freddy stuff and classic Jason stuff of like the whole never sleeping pills, like, you know, it'll keep you up or it makes you fall asleep. And then you have the whole Jason's killings, his norm, his uh, known for his killings, like mm-hmm. ridiculous killings. You know, like the whole stabbing that guy in the bed and then flipping the bed open, and make him yeah. like, like a taco. So it's like you know that's typical stuff. But I think the the one is the fact that people didn't like the fact that there wasn't much fighting between Jason and Freddy, and most people didn't like the fact that. Jason won too. And then at the same time, everybody's saying Freddie won. You know, he's still not dead. Mm-hmm. All this, I don't know. It, it's just, it's a whole big old left field. I think me and Johnny got a debate about it because, like, I know he, he and I love both of these characters. And yeah. we we're just like, I don't know, man. Like, these people are going crazy, but then we started getting the bait on each other and then like, it just kept going on. You know how we get me and Johnny get. So it was, yeah. Yeah, it does, it, yeah. <laughs> my, my thing that I, I enjoyed, cause I personally did enjoy that movie. So I, I guess yeah. you can say that's probably another horror movie that I can say I, I was okay with watching. Um, for me, since I, I didn't, I hadn't seen any of the nine round Elm street, any of the uh, Friday the 13, any of the, those type of movies. The fact that they put these two, I mean, I knew who they were. I mean, somebody, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you, even though if you don't watch that stuff, you know who Freddy Krueger is. You know who, yeah, Jason and and, and uh, Michael Myers and all that stuff. And and no, it's not Austin Powers. <laughs> it's, I remember for the longest, <laughs> I was like, Austin Powers is killing people. I'm like, what's going on over here? I know that's why I posted people, those things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I felt that one when I saw that. I was like, yeah, that's uh, that's me right there. Uh, I like the I like the movie because it, the even though people like me had not really seen the or or don't know the full story on these on these characters, these legends, yeah. the the movie kind of gives you little little here and there, little tips and hints of who they are, how they how they became who they are, what they are, and then why yeah. they're fighting. And yeah, so yeah. that's why for me, I was like, okay, cool. I don't have to watch the 20, whatever uh, Friday Nightmare on Elm Street that there is. I don't know how many there really is, but it I, looks like it feels like there's like 20 of them. I think there's like seven. And then I think there's, yeah, I think there's probably seven, seven, seven or no, eight with this one with the Friday versus Jason. Then there's Jason where it's, they think there's 11 of those. And then not that's not counting the the, the reboots, wow. the remakes. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that like, that's pretty nuts. <laughs> but that's what I liked. Like I said, from the Freddy versus Jason, is that they they give you those little those little little history lessons, if you can want to call them those, to let you know who they are and what they are and why they're fighting. I thought that was kind of cool. I was talking yeah. to Johnny. Um, I want to say it was either yesterday or the day before on Netflix. There's a show called the the movies that made us. And oh yeah. Season three is horror movies, excluding mm-hmm. coming to America. I don't know why that movie or that movie's in that genre, but whatever, you know, <laughs> I guess it's a horror coming to America. Uh, but they it had, is, well, yeah, now it is. <laughs> now it is. Yeah. for real. <laughs> so they had that nightmare on Elm street and I was watching that one and I was watching the create, the, how they were moving, how they were doing it and the budget. And, and it's just crazy how I think, I don't remember if it's that one or if I was watching the hall, the Halloween movie, where they originally had a budget of like 350,000 or something like that. And they, then they, they had to get the crew to work for like two weeks without pay. And then they still stuck around. And I was just like, dude, that's crazy. And then for the movie to make so much money. And then because of how many people love this stuff, like it's crazy. I was watching, I'm not sure if you posted or somebody posted that Halloween kills, uh, grossed out at what 50 million 50 point something million dollars in the yeah. box office that's crazy yeah 
yeah, and then, yeah. And and I don't, is that even counting streaming from from Peacock or is that just movies? The movie thing. Uh, that I don't know exactly, but like I was kind of impressed about how this movie got so much, honestly. And you know what? I think they probably are comparing it to with the uh, the streaming as well because mm-hmm. I think Peacock made it. Uh, 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 that announcement that they're not so confident on this movie about people going to the theaters to watch it still. So that way they, they still did the streaming, which it makes sense. Yeah. There's some people that are kind of skeptical on going to the theater yeah. still. And yeah, I, I watched it in the theaters, honestly. And it's sometimes you got, you kind of get the regrets of going to the theater because you got mm-hmm. people talking in the back and, all that stuff and kicking your seats but uh yeah i mean for it to to reach 50 million and then it's still grossing up too over there yeah. out, out in the others uh outside of us it's pretty amazing to see this happening i mean i i me and aaron actually did uh our review for that on monday on on halloween kills johnny couldn't make it on that one so we didn't really have to we didn't hear about him uh, on what he thought of the movie, but the I I like the movie. I did. I, I gave it a little low rating. That's because of the storyline and 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 how they kind of contradict themselves on that movie. Because like when they first announced the 2018 ha- Halloween, they were saying that it's going to be continuing from part one of Halloween. And no, he's not related to uh, Jimmy Lee Curtis's uh, 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 actor or anything like that. It's a completely different storyline. And it's just going to be that. And he's a human being. He's not no spiritual, like, cult, superhuman kind of thing. And then when he got Halloween Kills came out, and I'm like, they're acknowledging that he has super black, like, dark powers. Uh, he's He feeds off the killing and all this stuff and they're making him seem like, like he's like, like I want to say autistic, but like mentally challenged type of person okay. who has a mind of a six year old and he's doing all these things. And I'm like, um, okay. And all these things that Michael's been taking in and out of, of, of people from the other people is like that fool should have been dead already. But at the same time, he's still getting up and he's still running or walking <laughs> like like nothing's happening. So they are kind of going with the whole fact of how Halloween 4 was. So Halloween 4, we kind of got introduced to him being as some type of controlled monster from the dark cults and everything. And that's why he couldn't die. And that's why he starts running faster, walking faster and somehow teleporting places here and there. So it's, it's, it's a weird way that they're, that they said they were never going to go that route, but they end up still going to that route. So it, it I gave it a three out of five, okay. <laughs> honestly, because uh, the, the lighting of the movie was good. The, the story was there, but it just didn't fulfill it. And most of the whole movie was evil dies tonight. <laughs> yeah. I've seen <laughs> a lot get of those tired. themes everywhere. Yeah. It, it it gets old real quick, man. And it, I think the the what killed the movie is the whole mob scenes and the outrageous political thing that they try to put. The director did. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get it. We all get misled on the news, and we all get led out by stupid leaders here and there. And that's what shows. That's what is. That's what this movie is showing. And I don't think we need to watch that i mean we go to the movies to escape from reality and yeah and to really like enjoy especially on on horror movies you know like yeah it's a little nitpick to it but it's more like a parody you know like we just get a little parody of someone making fun of this person and they die in the movie (laughs) you know like that's the thing which is just that's what it's supposed to be but now they're making it so political so much um like, well, this movie has a meaning, you know, it's about this, it's about being, having a role leader or like how Candyman was like, it's about black lives matter and all this kind of stuff. It's like, okay. As a horror fan, you don't really want to hear that. You don't really yeah. want to see that because we hear that every day in our lives. And 
I love Candyman, you know, like, and I understand the racism part of that movie, you know, like, especially the beginning, the very first Candyman. But do they really have to, like, try to establish that on the newer one? You know, like, it didn't really make sense for that. I mean, we, everybody that went to go see it understands the first movie. So yeah. they shouldn't really have to be schooled on racism still existing and all this stuff. It's like, we know that. We know that. <laughs> Just don't remind us. We, we come here to be entertained, not to be schooled on what your political views are. You right. know, so it it's... It's a downer. I did still enjoy though, these two movies, uh, but I mean, it's just it is what it is, man. I mean, I just hope that Scream doesn't come all political either, you know. And yeah. Leave that shit, you know, at home and just entertain people. You know, we come, we get, we come to the movies to get scared, to to laugh, to enjoy the actions, not to, you know, deal with everyday life that we deal with. You know, that's that's yeah. the thing. Yeah, the, I like it's you said you said it perfectly where you go to the movies to escape reality. A lot of the stuff that yeah. you see is the stuff that you're not going to you're not going to see stuff like, you know, you you're not going to see stuff like that in real life. And it's, that's, that's the yeah. whole point. You're trying to escape all that, which is, yeah, I 100 percent agree. Uh, touching back on something you said about Halloween kills. You said that back in 2018, they had come out and they said that there was going to be a different different storyline to it. It wasn't going to be yeah. attached to it. So my question is. For somebody like myself who hasn't really seen the Halloween movies, should I go back to actually go and watching the very first one and watch them in sequential order and then watch Halloween Kills? Or can I watch Halloween Kills and still understand what's going on and still enjoy the movie? So that's a good one because uh, Aaron actually did that. See, Aaron actually watched Halloween Kills and then he watched the 2018. And he felt after watching Halloween Kills that he was a little off on some things so he ended up watching 2018 and then he he also said on 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 our review that it makes sense now like okay it makes sense why this is happening he went back and watched some of yeah yeah okay so um it's if you want to follow this franchise then yeah watch halloween 1978 version and then the 2018 version that way when you watch those two, then you watch the Halloween Kills, then you kind of know what's going on. The other timelines, it just goes off, you know, like it goes from Halloween one, part two, and then goes to another thing. And <laughs> like there's Halloween three and it doesn't have Michael Myers in it at all, you know, and it's oh, wow. still called Halloween three. And then it goes from like, then it goes to Halloween and then Halloween two four, five, and six. And then there's Halloween one, two, and then Halloween H2O, and then Halloween Resurrection. Like, there, it's, Bro, a, it's a weird-ass yeah. list, dude. <laughs> you already lost me. Now I'm just going to go back to watching the very first one and then the 2018 one. Because I have yeah. the Peacock one, and I found out yesterday because Johnny mentioned it that I that it's on Peacock. So if I pay the premium on Peacock, I can watch it. And yeah, so yeah. since I have the premium from Xfinity and I watch all the WWE stuff, I I noticed and I have it and I was like, oh, I can watch it for free, you know. So yeah, I was I kind of wanted to watch it, you know, but then I was kind of tempted to see waiting for your guys' review and I saw that you guys posted it today. So I know later on today when I go to work, I usually just put your guys' podcast on or, or I go and watch uh, listen to other people's podcasts at work and I just play them because I just drive yeah. around all day and and so I'll be listening to them. Um, so I think that would probably be the best idea for me to just to go back and watch the first one and then you said 2018 so 2018 version this and all three have jamie lee curtis in it yes okay yeah all all three of them on there because on halloween 2 they on that one they said that michael myers was related to her (laughs) Mm -hmm. and that's where everything went differently and then there's yeah it's just a lot of stuff like there's one with her having a relationship with michael myers as a brother and sister and then there's this one where she's was just a victim and she's traumatized by it. And it shows from the first movie to 2018 and to this one. So okay. it, it, it makes a little more sense to the fact that Michael Myers just kills anybody in his path. It doesn't matter what sex you are, what mm-hmm. opposite of sex you're attracted to, 
or color, race, or anything. Like this guy will go after you no matter what because you you're in his it. way. <laughs> yeah, all yeah, of yeah. us will get hit. His, his, <laughs> he's all about all lives that don't matter. You know, like he yeah. will come after everything. You know, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, because there's a, there's a lot of that stuff right now that I've been seeing on Twitter, uh, on Facebook to Twitter, because like you know, Facebook like to screenshot everything, and it's that mm. they're saying that Michael Myers is homophobic, Halloween movie is homophobic, and I'm like, yeah. it's not. <laughs> See, that's that's what's now now nowadays, man. Everybody's just nitpicking at anything. They're trying to find anything to complain about to just. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I I got off of Facebook about I want to say about three years ago. Okay. So I don't even go on it anymore. Uh, I was on Twitter for maybe a week and a half tops. And then I was like, nope, this is just not for me. Cause me personally, I like to troll. I like to, I like to rattle people up and I, I get a laugh at it, you know? And then, and I don't mean yeah. no bad intentions for it. It's just people that like to just, you know, die on one hill. I kind of want to see it tempt them to see if they can go to a different hill, but yeah. Um, yeah, no, I'm definitely going to check it out. I'm definitely going to look at the other ones. Um, which one of the horror movies? Because I was listening to, um, I forgot what podcast I was listening to, but they were talking about horror movies and they were saying that one of the characters, either Jason, uh, Mike Myers, or Freddy. Actually, I don't think it was Freddy because Freddy's the one that he was, he was burned, right? He was burned alive. Yeah. And yeah. then I don't know how he got his came back or whatever but um one of them had to do with the mom the mom controlled one of the one of the characters oh that's jason is that jason okay yeah because because i think that's the one that was in that freddy versus jason one and and i think that's they were doing something with the mom on that i don't remember what it was but somebody was saying that 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 mom is actually related to one of the other characters too and she controlled both of them and she was supposed to come out and do some stuff with both i don't know I'm not, I'm not really too deep into the horror stuff, but yeah, that that's a pretty good storyline though too. If if you know the mom's the one that wants to start hurting people, so I might actually like that yeah. Jason stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, like Jason Part One, the the original Friday the Thirteenth. Uh, it was the fact that we got to establish the history of Jason, mm-hmm. uh, of when he was a kid and everything, and then uh, obviously you know now already that the mom was the one that uh controlled him and the whole movie it wasn't uh jason at all it was his mom spoiler okay. yeah <laughs> um it, it was his mom that did all the killing and 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 then when that happened when she died then we got introduced to jason at the ending of the movie and it comes to part two and part two was the first real introduction of jason and okay. continue on off from there because i remember she still, she still controls him <laughs> yeah because i remember in the in, in the beginning the very beginning of freddy versus jason you hear you hear a woman's voice yeah he's 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 laid and he's laid in the in the in the dirt and the trees is, is growing around him or whatever and you hear the voice it's like a woman's voice and then then you see the heartbeat and the chest raises and his eyes open and all that stuff yeah, that's well. There you go. You got the spoiler already, so I don't have to watch the movies anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I'll definitely it's, it's watch actually, the Halloween it, ones at least. It, it's actually pretty cool. I mean, like, th- I mean, all these uh, trilogy uh, sequels to each one, the whole saga of each movie character. Mm-hmm. There's bound to be like at least two or three bad egg movies, you know, that are just terrible at writing or the acting and all this stuff, but it's, it's still entertaining, you know, for the fact of that. And with, with this one with Halloween kills, the entertaining part was the killing, which kind of made sense to like the whole classic horror movies where Jason and Freddy, um, you know, it was all about how they're going to kill this one another, especially Mm -hmm. like I said, mostly Jason, because he had the most creativity. Like if someone's in the sleeping bag and he sees them, he grabs the sleeping bag and he just like picks them up and he throws them on a tree and slams them up yeah. and everything and, or hangs them up over the fire pit of the, and then have them burn inside the freaking sleeping bag kind of shit. Like he, he was just really creative and I like that. That was, that was pretty cool. And they did that a lot on that Freddy versus Jason. When I remember the, uh, the doc scene and closer to the end when they're 
I believe it's Freddy. He's he's hitting the uh, the valves on on the big cylinder, the CO two mm-hmm. tanks, and then yeah, you just see him just fly by. That 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 whole scene right there was really really cool. Uh, yeah, how'd you yeah. feel about the uh, Alien versus Predator movies? Both of them. Uh, or did they make three? See. I think they only made two, right? I think they did three. I think they did three. Um, the Alien versus Predator, the first one, yeah, I was excited for that one. I was like, oh, it's was a long time waiting too. Same thing with Jason versus Freddy, and it, it was it was pretty good and interesting, and it kind of like threw me off a little bit because of the storyline with that. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because they're trying so hard to make this movie work with everything. And it was just more of the fact of the human part of the acting right. was kind of bad. And I did like the, that they did touches with how the, the Xeomorph, the alien uh, still does what it does in the movies and alien movies, you know, like the whole egg hatching and the baby comes in and attacks the face and plants the egg inside your stomach, the whole like, uh, pinning them in the wall kind of stuff and you know just their their blood is still acid and mm-hmm. even their sweats are acid and their saliva like it's just so cool that they still establish that and predator honestly i was rooting for predator i like predator predator was yeah, pretty, I, pretty dope i like predator also and I, I like the fact that he still had the gadgets and the special weapons and he's still pulling spines out of the people's backs and using their skull as a trophy stuff. And like, mm-hmm. I, I, that's just classic, you know? And, but uh, I didn't really, I don't really remember too much of the second one, but it's been a while, <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, it's been, they're, they're pretty, oh, they're okay. But I, it's more along the line of, the two main characters battling each other. Some, some movies, I feel like some movies should be left alone at one. Some yeah. Movies need to just, just leave it at that one. And, and, and I, and that, uh, Alien vs. Predator, I feel like it should have just been left at one. I, I saw the other one. I don't remember seeing the third one, but I do remember seeing the second one. And I was just like, yeah, no, just, yeah. Yeah. I, I there's some, parts where they have sequels and they have different characters playing the lead roles and it really bums out the movie mm-hmm. and all this like the for a good example is um the crow with okay. brandon lee uh-huh. you know brandon lee was awesome in that movie of course he died you know while filming that movie and then they had the crow city of angels and the crow whatever else number and it it just didn't fit for how it was going that like you can kind of see like how they still try to keep the saga alive of the crow character uh, but i mean the comic books is always eric draven mm-hmm. <laughs> always eric draven that there were other crows out there that, that that had similarities to him but they all had different abilities this movie's after the first one it's all the same character, but different names, you know, yeah. and it's like they all had the same ability, all this kind of stuff. And it, it, it's just, it, it didn't do well for the movie. And here they want to do a reboot for the, for the crow. And I know that me and Johnny and I think Aaron too, and Caesar, they're like, no, we don't want to reboot. Like just leave the movie alone. Same thing with like killer clowns from outer space and the lost boys. Like, <laughs> Like me and Johnny went to town on the whole like Lost Boys like picture that they released and who's going to be who and whatnot and we're like this this is not believable man this is not believable for the fact that we know them as these type of characters and it, you know like with Harry Potter you know uh, mm-hmm. uh, Daniel Radcliffe like either way every time you see him you think of Harry Potter either yeah, way yeah that's it yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing he's trying to get rid of, but he still is Harry Potter because of his structure, his his mannerisms, all that stuff. And this, that's how I feel with these other characters coming along. You know, like I never seen them be that type of bad boy to be like, I run the vampire click, you know, and and mm-hmm. he can't fuck with us. You're like, I don't, somebody, I don't somebody see that. Plays the movie, like. plays the movie so well. It's it's theirs. Like there, you just can't, yeah, it's stuck. It, it's yeah, kinda, exactly. it's just like he. Uh, I'm drawing a blank right now for his name, but the guy that played Joker, he, Keith uh, Ledger, Keith Ledger. Yeah. And the, the dark Knight. that's he, for me is going to be Joker. That's, 
that's yeah. that's Joker. Uh, the guy from Suicide Squad and all that. I, I when I saw that, I was like, nah, I don't, even, I don't even know why this guy even came out. Just should have stayed home. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I people, how people play it, dude. They they earn that spot and they it's theirs. Like forever, that's gonna be them. I remember Johnny was so into that. Like, oh, I think he's gonna do a good job, but he was also kind of scared of it. But then he also wanted to see more and more and more. And I'm like, dude, just face it. He's just not a good Joker. He just he didn't establish it right, you know. He, he like we, I seen all the behind the scenes stuff for the Suicide Squad, and you know, everybody was like, yeah, he's trying to do this. He did this. He did that. And he's trying to stay in character and all this stuff. I'm like, why is he trying to do that? You know, like the actor from the Suicide Squad one. Yeah, Leto? Jared Leto. Yeah, Jared Leto. Yeah, Jared Leto. Yeah. He, okay. he, he kept trying to stay as a Joker. And I'm like, why is he trying to pull a Jim Carrey for? You know, because Jim Carrey did that on uh, Man on the Moon when he was mm-hmm. Andy Kaufman. And I'm like, why are you trying to do this, dude? Like sending condoms to a fucking one of the, your actresses and stuff like that. Like, why the fuck would you Especially do that? Especially the you know? times, these, these, these times right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like, you're not you're not establishing it you know you're not you're not succeeding it but when he got asked back for the justice league and i was like okay let's see if he does better and then before that we got that movie uh the little things the little things with him and uh malik remy and denzel washington that was out on hbo max and he said the way how he wanted to play the Joker is how he was in the little things. And I'm oh, like, okay. oh, all right, you know. So like, I saw that interview and I was like, okay, so maybe he's finally gonna have a free range on the Zack Snyder cut on being that kind of Joker that he mm-hmm. wanted. So of course, Johnny punished me by watching that movie for the four hours of that fucking shit. And uh, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> yeah yeah he's in love with ben affleck so i'm i'm just not not having that um he uh he didn't have the whole role of the movie i thought he was going to be in the rest of this movie and uh he got the last like maybe 10 minutes or five minutes of the ending of the movie and the way how he acted and and everything and the chemistry that he had with ben affleck as batman was a lot better than anything because Jared Leto, to me, he he did a good job on that ending part of being the Joker. Okay. He still had the long hair, he had the makeup on, and he was just talking crazy and everything. And then he worked with Ben Affleck. To me, the last time I actually wanted to watch Ben Affleck in a movie was with Armageddon with Bruce Willis. The way how the lead good character movie right there. That's a good. The movie, way how man. the way how Bruce Willis led on talking to him is the way how Jared Little did to to Ben Affleck, where he made him good on mm-hmm. that whole little scene. I wish he would have done that for the rest of the movie, but he didn't do that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, how do you it, feel it about that Phoenix good, that Phoenix guy playing uh, in the movie Joker? I remember yeah. I remember his full name, but Phoenix. I think his name's Phoenix. That Joker movie. The, the one with uh oh Joaquin Phoenix Joaquin Phoenix yeah there we go yeah I like that movie I like that it. movie was uh, very interesting it felt like a documentary for a, a little bit and it yeah, was and yeah. it, but it was like really really intense and dark and and then even when he won he won the award even yeah the, <laughs> even the award it was creepy it was almost in the same vibe of, of Joker yeah he um I like I like how he portrayed him because we saw someone got broken down, mm-hmm. especially in a, in a bad state of mind already. And I, I think we, we all had a, a talk about it because uh, it was the fact that I think I said it was, did you guys feel like they should keep going, uh, humanizing these villains, you know, that are known for these crazy chaos. And I think most of us were like, you know, it, depending on how it is, but at the same time, it's like, you know, uh, I started feeling sorry for villains when it came to the movie, uh, The Devil's Rejects, 
you okay. know, I was, I was rooting for them and like, Oh yeah, you know, go, you know, kill them out and everything. They're just trying to survive. And it's like, even though like I knew on house of a thousand corpses, they're fucking like killing people and, and with the no remorse and everything. And it was just, you know, like knowing for the fact that I know how brutal they are and I'm cheering for them makes me think, okay, am I right in the head right now? You know? And I remember too, when the Joker came out, everybody, not, well, I wouldn't say everybody, but there's a, a good amount of the media saying that, oh, uh, kids should never watch this movie. I heard that stuff too. Because it will lead to them doing mm-hmm. all this stuff. And it's like, like I told the guys and and I, and that, you know, my daughter, she's, uh, she's going to be 14 this year. And I let her watch these movies. Reason because I took the time talking to my daughter, knowing my daughter, knowing what makes her tick, what makes what things makes her what things that she right, likes, right, right. doesn't like, and everything. And for the fact that I trusted my daughter to watch Deadpool, to watch this, this and everything, I even told her after watching the movie, because I took her. It's like, do you feel like you want to kill anybody? She's like, No. So do you feel sorry for him? She's like, I feel sorry for him, uh, how he became how he what led him to become the Joker. Right. But after what he does after, I don't feel sorry for him because he asked for it. So mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, thank you. <laughs> it's like you she, she understood a it. Lot she, of points. she went in with a clear mind and she understood what was going on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like it, it's I get what people, you know, all this kind of stuff and everything, but I think the Joker itself was a pretty good movie. It's a good origin storytelling for developing the new joker because i think this joker is supposed to be in the same uh universe with uh robert pattinson's movie the batman i think they're supposed to be the same oh okay Uh, i'm not too sure but i could be wrong i'm probably wrong anyways but uh yeah i mean the fact that we're gonna get another one already too uh joker 2 coming out i don't know when probably sometime next year or the year before after that but it just to see more you know like w- if this guy is going to develop the joker that we all know you mm-hmm. know the the one that's unknown the one that's going crazy because on the killing joke we got an origins from him you know from the killing joke book and to the movie uh you know he was a comedic guy he was all in comedy and he had a wife or a girlfriend and, and she was pregnant and people looked down on him because he wasn't funny and he needed money to pay for the rent and all this stuff. Yeah, so he yeah. did mob thing and he, that's when they introduced the red hood. So I'm thinking that if they were going to do something like that, that they're going to use the Joker as like the red hood kind of thing, like the passing to man, passing the mantle to, of the Joker to the next person. Mm-hmm. You know, that's worthy enough to be just as, as insane as the other one. Yeah. I think that's what they're probably going to do, but so it's going to we'll get really interesting. That. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be traumatizing probably too. <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure. But uh, stay, staying in the comic book era, I was, I was speaking to Johnny. Like, like I said, it was either yesterday, a couple of days ago, and I wanted his opinion on uh, the new venom, the venom, the let there be carnage. He told me yeah. he hasn't seen it yet. He said, yeah, you had seen it. So I yeah. waited to see. Um, I was wondering to see if you guys had a an episode yet of it. He said, "I believe you and Caesar, or was it you and Paul? I'm sorry, you and uh, Aaron uh, talked a little bit about it in the beginning of one episode, which I believe he sent it to me." Um, yeah, yeah, it was me and, and me and Caesar. Me and mm-hmm. Caesar saw it. Aaron didn't see it yet. Um, What's your actual take on that movie? Did you enjoy it? I I did enjoy it. Uh, it, it's the it's kind of similar to the first one um yeah but it's it's a different little outtake to it because the only downside was there wasn't enough screen time for the for them to be battling each other and to let on to the to the finale fight you know yeah but woody harrison uh as um Carnage as Carnage, as, 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 he did a pretty good damn job. Yeah, honestly. I think so too. Yeah, yeah, he he did a really good job. I like the way he, how he was. I, I like the fact that too at the at the the church scene, 
and I think I talked about it too in, the, in that episode uh, it was where they were trying to get married and after a while like his wife did that scream and carnage fucking like bitch slapped her down yeah 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 that carnage has got the priest is like i need fuel and bites the head off of him and just throws yeah. the priest out of there like dude that's that i never thought i would see something like that mm-hmm. especially as a pg-13 like crazy well and it's a pg-13 it was supposed to be rated r I don't, I don't know. I, don't I, remember. I think it was PG thirteen. I remember but. that scene because at, at that same moment, right before he does that, uh, Eddie Brock is promising Venom that he can kill everybody. But then he goes, "But not him. You can't. Don't touch him. You don't." Yeah. He's pointing at the priest. <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, yeah. he's good. He don't. You don't touch him." But I, yeah, thought, that, yeah. I thought that was that was pretty funny. I honestly, I feel like there was too much screen time for. I believe her name is Screech. I I, I oh, believe it's Screech or, or or Scream or something like that. Screech. But, Screech or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I feel the, like there the was girl. too much. Yeah, I feel like there was too much. Like I, I get it. You want to tell her story and who she is yeah. and the thing, but I don't know. I feel like it, it, I wanted to go see Venom and Carnage just go at it. You know. And, yeah, that's the point. You know, it's like you yeah. want to see them go at each other. I mean, the whole introduction and the way how he got the symbiote was kind of stupid. I dude. <laughs> I thought the same thing when I when the when the first one finished at the end credits and they showed Woody Harrison, I was like, he's either because he he's he's gonna be on death row. I'm pretty sure he's either gonna get a fork or he's gonna get something like in his last meal or he's gonna scratch him or something and somehow blood is gonna be transferred and that's what how he's gonna get him. Yeah, Yeah, and then when I saw it in the movie, I was like, yep, like I knew it. I knew that's exactly yeah. what was going to happen. But he ended up biting his hand. I'm like, come on, dude. Yeah. Like, that was just kind of like a dumb thing to do. And I was like, okay, well, in the comic books, I think it was uh, the some of the symbiote of uh, the sweat or something like that, like fell and mm-hmm. it got on him. And then he got the symbiote and it became the red one and all this stuff because it fits on his personality. Right. Cause it would, they got the, they got, they got the kill, the serial killer part. Correct. Yeah. From yeah. The comic book I like part. that. Yeah. I like that. I, I like the fact that they didn't do a whole flashback of a human scene. They did it as like a sketching kind mm-hmm. of stuff. And I thought that was pretty good. Like they definitely got that correct of him killing his grandma and, and, killing his mom and then yeah. disowning his father and burning the orphanage down. <laughs> yeah, they, like, they, yeah. They did it. They did some really, really cool parts. A lot of funny parts. The, the, and spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen it yet. You need you guys need to go watch it. But the, uh, the scene where they're there, where Eddie Brock and Venom are, are arguing with each other in, in the, in the, the bedroom or in the living room. Yeah. And he's like, why don't you eat? The, why don't you eat them? And it's uh share and sunny. It's oh the, yeah, the chickens. <laughs> I thought that was super funny. <laughs> and then he destroys the uh, destroys the motorcycle, and then he uh, he ends up going to a uh, like an underground clubhouse or something, and everybody's oh, yeah. dressed in costume, and he fits perfect. Yeah, uh, yeah I thought I, that was pretty cool. I, I personally liked the movie. I uh, I was just somewhat confused because when the the detective gets gets thrown onto the those pillars. And at yeah. the at the, the Catholic uh, the church, the cathedral, his eyes go blue, and I'm and I'm trying to remember from the storyline who he becomes from the comic books, because he becomes somebody. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's. Uh, oh shit, I I had it in my head right now too, but yeah, he's he uh, he becomes like an ally for a while, and then he becomes like one of those vigilante kind of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, 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 the name is not coming to me right now. <laughs> how, how, I about know the, I uh, how about the ending credits? What'd you think about that? I thought that was pretty cool. Honestly, mm-hmm. I thought it, it made the movie a lot better at, especially for making it up for not having so much venom and carnage going on mm-hmm. at each other, but like it made it seem like, uh, venom was going to show, Eddie Brock about his cult, his life and everything. Mm-hmm. And that's where we got that whole thing. I was like, Oh, okay. You know, it's probably in a different dimension. No, it's just the whole time thing of the whole uh, Spider-Man with the new Spider-Man and, coming out. Yeah. And, and the fact that 
that the only thing I got weird weird on was the fact that they showed Tom Holland's uh, Peter Parker and he, Venom and Eddie Brock is believing what what Jane John Jameson was talking about. You know, like he was saying, oh, he's a menace, all this stuff and everything, and it goes back to that scene where it's like, I'll let you eat anybody you want. You know, it let you eat mm-hmm. anybody and to see that, that he turns into Venom and he licks the, the screen. I was like, oh, okay. So that's how Peter is going to see him as a bad guy because right. he's coming after him right away. So it makes sense. But I kind of like the the cartoon slash like uh, comic book versions, you know, like because I remember that in the 90s, the comic uh, Spider-Man, they had uh Peter Parker was saving uh, Jane Jonah Davison's son from the from from the spaceship because they went to the moon and they grabbed some rocks, but things happened, so they crashed, mm-hmm. and that symbiote caught onto his clothing and it was attached to him most of the time, and then he all of a sudden got the whole black suit and was loving the fact of how it works, how it made him feel, and the power. And that's where we got, you know, the just the black suit, pure black with the white uh, spider on there. I was like, all right, you know, that's pretty cool. And then once he finally got rid of it because he knew that he was set to kill a lot after defeating uh, Shocker, he found a way to get rid of the symbiote. And then Eddie Brock before that was following them and you know, it's like, I'm going to save you. You're going to be the main course and ties him up right under the bell. And then once the bell was happening, Peter wanted to get out. The symbiote got off of yeah. him and he was, and he, and that's when the symbiote fell into the cracks, found Eddie Brock tied up with the web and got him to become Venom. And I thought that was the best introduction for Venom still to this day. You know, like yeah, even yeah, like yeah. the Sam Remy one was not that great either, but they tried to, uh, copy it. They try to copy it. He tried to get it done, but it just didn't work that well. They had the wrong actor to too <laughs> to play Eddie Brock. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. They uh, so that's the one thing that that's kind of sucks when it comes to the comic books and the and the movies they make, especially yeah. people that are really huge fanatics of, yeah. of the comic books. Uh, my biggest movie that that's what I heard was coming out. And I'm really, really hoping they don't mess this up is the World War Hulk. I'm a huge Hulk oh, fan. Oh, yeah. And I really, and I love that that actual comic book one. And I yeah. really hope they don't mess that up and they go to the storyline of it. One that yeah. I really hope they would make is uh, Deadpool versus uh, Deadpool versus the universe. Oh, yeah. That, that would make a really good, really multi-series movie right there. And if they I kept think, it to the actual to the comic book versions of it, that would be pretty cool. I think the way how now Disney owns Fox and everything that I don't think we I mean, it would be nice to, but it will be like how it is for uh, Marvel on Disney Plus where they did like low key and all that stuff. It will it will possibly be that way. But since it will be too much violence into it, they probably will do it as an animation of what if style. Yeah, using so the multiverse. I think yeah, I think yeah. that's how they're going to probably use it. But I mean, I don't know, man. That, that would be a great one to see. But Disney has the the claws on that right now, and Disney has everything. The mouse, <laughs> the mouse is everywhere, bro. Yeah, yeah. John, don't tell Johnny that. <laughs> <laughs> I like to give them like all hail the mouse and shit. I mean, yeah, I like yeah. Disney. I like I like the mouse and everything, you know. But like, I, I also like. The only thing I just can't stand is musicals. But other other than that, I could do like the Disney stuff and for them to try to do these things to make things happen. It's cool. Like I told them that Disney is trying to do a, a 18 and over for the Disney plus. Oh, know, are they? So that way. Yeah. Cause they're trying to do like the Simpsons have some nasty stuff. You got some of the Marvel stuff like Deadpool, for example, has a lot of nasty stuff. So they want to place that on there and show the fans that even though you guys want a rated R movie, we're going to give it to you, but it's going to be for the 18 and plus part of the Disney plus and parent, parental permission and all this other stuff. Yeah. 
So there's going to be a lot of things like that as, as time goes on. I mean, I, from what I read, it was supposed to happen sometime this year, but I'm thinking they're probably still holding it off and still trying to get in touch with it. Cause I think it's happening right now on the European style or, uh, okay. side. So I yeah. think that's what they're doing right now. So I'm not too 100% sure with it. And I'm assuming they're, they're trying to figure out contracting the contracts yeah. and how paying the actors, like the whole thing that happened with the, uh... Scarlett Johansson with the streaming and and the thing. yeah, it's all just you know just gray areas that they need to figure out, man. But yeah, but like you're saying, time time will only tell. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah have to wait and, and, and figure that out. Um, I had one more one one last question for you, man. I, I noticed that you have a, a guitar behind you right there. Now is that yes. an acu- that's an acoustic or is that a uh, the electric acoustic guitar? Uh, this is actually both. Is it? Uh, it's mm-hmm. electric acoustic guitar. Uh, yeah, that's. I've had that since or probably about maybe seven years now. That one. Okay. I was given one looks just like that. I still have it. It was given to me about, uh, I want to say about five years ago. And I've only learned the beginning of one song. And, but dude, I just, I don't know, man. I've, I've tried so hard to learn other songs and, and, YouTube has been somewhat of a friend for me. Um, how long have yeah. you been actually playing guitar? Because uh, you so currently play the I, bass too, right? In your band, I, I do. I can do the bass parts okay. on some of the stuff on the guitar because I have a pedal that could do a low end octave okay. on on air. Uh, but I, I've been playing a guitar on the summer of '03. So maybe like 17, 18 years now of playing guitar. Self-taught, yes, okay. all the way. Um, I've always been interested in playing a guitar ever since uh, the movie La Bamba came out. Yeah, know, yeah, and, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's finding out that... <laughs> can't go finding out that Richie Valens. Yeah, seriously, dude. Especially that he's in a Hall of Fame right now on somewhere around out here that they were supposed to do a hall of fame thing going on. Mm-hmm. But well, his um, brother, uh, his brother just died. His brother yeah, just died yeah. a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. He, he passed away like three, three or four years ago. Yeah. 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 He was a, he was a cool guy. I met him a couple of times. Oh, did you? Yeah. I think yeah, the I only person that's still alive from, from what I've heard is uh, Donna. The actual, yeah, uh, the actual female who, 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 or the actual Donna, the real one that with the music, the song was written from. Yeah, I think, I think she is still alive. I know a couple of Richie's uh, nieces are still around. They live mm-hmm. out around the Aptos area, yeah, and a little bit in Santa Cruz and Watsonville. Uh, but yeah, I used to see him a lot. You know, just uh, you know, he he was a cool dude. You know, I I ran into his daughter, his daughter like a year ago or no two years ago mm-hmm. at uh ah shit i forgot the name of that place it's san juan san juan patista or something like that okay. yeah she, she she was there and uh she's really cool you know she's a really cool uh person um there there i might have some type of relationship between her and 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 uh Richie Valens, like like family wise, I don't know. Hey, it's because of music. See, out. that's it's, you got the love <laughs> of music, bro. You you're connected to him. Uh, I I don't know. There, there there's ways that I'm like somehow related to him. I'm not 100 percent sure, but like they're I'm still trying to figure that out more. But um, so you've been yeah, playing they, for for about 17 years now. Can you play a song by just listening to it, or can or do you still need to read? Like, can you read the the notes and stuff on a piece of paper? Or can you can you hear a song on YouTube or something and automatically just start playing it? Uh, that that's that it comes and goes with that one. Mm-hmm. Like, so if I listen to a song, I could kind of like, oh, I think they're using this type of tuning. I could see that they're using a seven string, eight strings, or six regular standard six strings. Um, yeah, like I, I can kind of get some of it down on by hearing it uh i do read tablature but not music notes that well yet Mm -hmm. um all this was more just like self-taught stuff man like 
like I've always been in and in, onto the guitars and and when it came to the point of actually owning mine own it was like a big game changer you know like I it came with I had a little starter kit it came with a little little amp and everything and I just started playing and then when Johnny found out he was like oh dude we need to I need to have you play some guitars on my songs and all this stuff yeah, yeah. and everything and we never really got around to it, but like I've always been liking making music, you know, and my brother had this like beat maker and I started making these beats and Johnny used to come over to my house and he would like listen to it and he would like rap over it and everything and stuff like that. So it was like, all right, you know, we had like a lot of things planned out and everything. And sometimes he still wants me to do something with it. Uh, but uh, it's again it's the whole time and setting things up and yeah. trying to get to, to do things up because my life is just completely busy <laughs> right you know like it, it's uh but it playing guitar man like after like the first three years of playing i started picking up the bass and during that same year i picked up drums and two years after that keyboards and I started just learning just a little basic stuff and everything. And, um, music's always been in my life because of my mom. She's always playing like her 45, uh, inch records and playing the singles. My brother is a DJ. And every time growing up every day, I hear the music bumping loud. So it's in, <laughs> it's in your blood. Yeah. 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 And, and it's, it's cool. Cause like, I think, the only other person in my family that played guitar was my uncle. And he was also, he loved the Rolling Stones, you know, and he played guitar and played their songs. And he was also an artist. He drew a lot and everything. Mm -hmm. And I, my mom keeps telling me, it's like, that's where you got it from. You got it from your uncle. You know, you could draw, you could play the guitar. And, but you're a little more advanced because you're playing all these other stuff and you know you're you're doing drawing at the same time so you're you're a very talented kid it's like well i wish i would have heard that when i was younger but <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I, yeah, yeah music is is my life right now man yeah i i for, for me to, i like i like the yeah i like the guitar i I don't call myself a player because I can't play. I, I mean, if you were to play, if uh, if I was to play something, it would just be like the first three seconds of a song at the beginning. And <laughs> yeah, because, yeah. because of that song is so for, for at least for, for the Hispanic people and all that, they, when they hear the first couple of tones, they know what song that is. If they listen to the, uh, like the, uh, like a Spanish punk music or, or, Hombres G, los uh, enanitos verdes, that type of music, mana, mm -hmm. stuff like that. They'll yeah. know, they'll know the first couple tunes. They know what song that is, but that's all I know. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know the chorus. <laughs> I don't know the rest of it. It's just, just the beginning, and and I can play it, and I can now I can do it without looking. I can do it before I have to turn the guitar actually facing me, and then yeah, play, yeah, play it like this, you know, play it down, <laughs> and I would flip it, and then I would look and. I'd be like, does the guitar have to be a certain size because of how fat my fingers are? Or is the, the face plate of the guitar supposed to be a certain length? Like, is it the guitar or is it me that don't know how to play properly? You know? Yeah. And yeah. I just started learning, dude. And I somewhat, like I said, I just know that beginning and, but I'm definitely going to keep going. The, the yeah. one song, the one song that I put on a goal for me to learn and I want to learn it completely is the uh, Tennessee whiskey. Oh, That's I know how to play that. Oh, bro. <laughs> no, don't tell me that. That would be man. That's the one it's very, song. It's Dude. really easy. I all I can tell you is really easy. I actually was teaching my girlfriend that song too. <laughs> oh, bro, I because I I like I like getting the guitar and I'll play it on my on YouTube. I'll play it on YouTube and then I just know the, you know the I, I still don't remember you know A B C and all that stuff or the the G and all that. I don't remember. I just know one two three four five with fourteen. And it's the second string or it's the fifth string or whatever it is. Yeah. And, yeah. Know, and then slide your finger this and then do this. And it's like, all right, I got to go like super slow motion and see how the fingers actually moving. And yeah, I, I that's just the, that's the one song that I for sure want to learn how to play. Oh yeah, dude. It, it's, it's really easy. <laughs> oh, there you go. Like, like, I don't know if you could hear it right. Yeah. Go.
very distantly, but yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, there you go. See? <laughs> yeah, so it's like it's yeah, I didn't have my pick with me right now. I usually carry one every every damn day. Just you know, I'm a guitar player. I have the yeah. I have to have a pick in my pocket in order to like if I see a guitar, if I have a chance to play it, I'm gonna grab it and play it. <laughs> when I first started, like when I started liking guitars and stuff, dude, I went to Amazon, I bought I bought like a little bag, it was like a it was either 50 or 60 picks, and it was different sizes, different textures. They were, I didn't even know they existed, but they had thumb picks. They have like yeah. a ring on it. And I was like, oh, this is, and I like using that. I feel like it's a yeah. lot more easier to do that. Um, yeah, dude. And then my guitar is the same thing. It has the, the, for electric and acoustic, but I don't have yeah. an amp. I don't have the chords. Mm. I don't have none of that stuff. So I feel like sometimes maybe it doesn't sound right because it's not connected to anything and it's not, the, the, the audio is not coming out how it should be. But yeah, yeah. It's definitely one thing that I, I really do want to learn is, is how to properly play the guitar. So once you finish, once you finish teaching your girlfriend, bro, you got to start a YouTube channel of teaching people how to play <laughs> guitars and I'll be the first <laughs> subscriber, bro. So yeah. I how to play I, that. I've been, I've been told by that a couple of times already, man. I was like, Oh, you guys should, you should do post videos of you playing the guitar at least. I'm like, you know what? Like I, I, Aaron told me this. He's like, you should do that. And I'm like, I, I get it. But there's a lot of people out there that are doing that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what am I so different about? You know, like the only thing you're going to hear differently is my picking style and, and everything. So he's like, oh, you have a point. You have a point. He says, yeah, that's why I don't post. I only post pictures of me playing, but never like so much of me playing, playing, you know. Yeah. And it's kind of like uh, that saying, well, it's not really much of a saying. I started saying it now, but like everyone could pick up a pen or pencil and start drawing. And the next thing you know, everyone's uh, is, is Picasso, you know, there's a lot of artists out there that draw and do things and yeah. there are millions of them. And it's the same way as guitar, you know, there's a lot of great musicians out there and they're posting it. And uh, that that that's that's the thing like with me like i like to play cover songs yeah i'm I'm not against it on on my own ways you know but when it comes to for for me like to do a cover for a band i like to change something up a little bit to make it more unique and and everything out you know put your little touch to it yeah you know like how marilyn manson did with sweet dreams you know, the 80s mm -hmm. version is like very like techno-ish and, and synthesizers and everything. And then Marilyn, here comes Marilyn Manson with the guitar style and it sounds eerie. And he added more things to this and there things to that made it his own, you know, and it, there's just so much that people can do. But if you're playing, I feel like if you're playing shot for shot, the same type of solo, how they bend it and how they play it, you're not getting noticed for your playing. You're getting noticed for playing someone else's style mm. and their music, you know? And that, that I had like beef with that with uh, two other band members, ex band members that are in my band now, because uh, they always wanted to do covers. Like covers is where the money's at. I'm like, yeah, it is, but I don't want to be known as a cover band, you know? Like yeah, I want to be, be original too yeah yeah like i if we're gonna do a cover let's change it up a little bit yeah. no 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 I, you got to do this you got to do that one guy who was in the band he is in uh and uh, the mariachi band and there it's like a cumbia kind of thing and he's known for just playing covers for those bands i mean they're out there of course you're gonna get big for playing covers but you're still not being that creative. Like mm -hmm. the, if you want to impress me, write something unique or play this a little different. Cause at that point yeah. you're waiting for somebody else to create something so you can try it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and that, and that's, I, that's how it is for me. Like if I hear a part on a song or if it's the intro, like you were saying, like, I want to learn that it sounds cool. Maybe mm -hmm. I can try to incorporate it with something different and all this stuff. And it, it's, 
that's just how I am. And like, I'll change the tuning. I'll change how I pick it from them and, and going on to play the song and, and then use that little part as a nod off to this is what I learned from this band, you know, like a, yeah. here's a nod to it, a Easter egg. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I would, but I'm down to just teach anybody that wants to play, man. Like mm-hmm. I, I, if people want to play the guitar and I see the passion in it in them, then yeah. You definitely, you know, you got to just show dedication the way how you show dedication on playing your games, shooting your guns, shooting or fucking playing anything or doing your podcast. <laughs> right, right. You know, really you putting your heart into show. it. Yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. if especially if you want to seduce your lady, yeah, I got that for you. You know, I got, I'll help you play mm-hmm. it and everything. You know, and that song, you know, my my lady likes it too, and I the first. That was like the first song I played for her. I was like, oh yeah, I know how to play it. So I played it and she's like, oh, okay. I don't know how to sing that well. So I, I didn't sing. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, just, yeah. I just played just the music. <laughs> let the guitar sing for you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I yeah. just did that. <laughs> you know what I was just thinking, man? I was just thinking it's really funny. Um, you were saying that there's a, there's a small chance that you might be related to Richie Valens. Um, yeah. And then you made the comment about you wanted to be more re- uh, original and not do too much cover bands. If you remember in the movie La Bamba when he tries out in the garage mm. and they're doing cover songs. They're not doing the original ones. And he starts to wanting to do some original songs too. There you go. That's yeah. how I'm like, Oh, look at that. Is there, there's, there is a connection between you guys right there. The, the other thing too, is that on that audition, he played a uh, little Richard's um, song. Uh, what was the song called again? Um, Rock it up rock it up uh from little richard and it's piano that song yeah and he played it in a guitar different style and everything but he kept the little bit of the same rhythm but he made it more rock but you knew what that song was when exactly even with the guitar yeah yeah so like that's that's so crazy that's the beauty that's the beauty of of a cover songs you know (laughs) Mm -hmm. you just put your input in it that that's my genre of music if i were to just listen to songs one just for a whole day or anytime just just nonstop is that type of music, Richie Valens, you know, the Manhattans, all this stuff. And then now yeah. there's these new guys that are coming out. I call them modern day oldies Duran, yeah, yeah. Duran Jones. And yeah. Um, yeah. The, um, I was just listening to them. They, the, the, the shiners. These are yeah. all, these are all young dudes from like LA and from the Bay area. And you would think they'd be playing, you know, their, their time of mu- music, but now they're playing, you know, from 50s, 60s, their, their parents used to cruise in and, and I'm yeah. like, oh, this is what I want. This is people my age and they're playing that type of music. I love that stuff. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what I like to listen to, man. My older brother who passed away like three years ago, he uh, he introduced me to Duran Jones and the indicators and in the indications. And uh, he showed me that song. Is it any wonder? Is by it any a wonder? Live, the mm-hmm. live version of it, you know? Yeah. And, and they're I was playing like, oh, in that okay. like library room or something like that. Yeah, out in New yeah. York. Mm-hmm. And um, I I heard that and I was like, oh shit! You That's know, how I was introduced to that. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, after that, like I I started listening to them and and they barely were throwing out singles here and there. And then finally, like on 2019, they started doing more album, mm-hmm. the whole album. And sadly, my brother passed away that year in, in January, and I found out uh, a month after that that uh, they were playing at the Catalyst. Oh and, wow! And they they got sold out so quickly that they did another day, mm. and so they did two days back to back of them playing, and it was just completely just sold out, man. It was like crazy. I didn't get to see them on that first night, but I saw them on their second night. And oh, dope. Uh, I, Aaron's brother used to work there. And, and I told him, like, hey, man, like, uh, if there is a chance, you think that you can introduce me to one of them? If you can, since you're like a security guy, you know, mm-hmm. I'll see what I can do. And then he talked to my other buddy, Earl, and he's like, yeah, I could try to do that, you know. And I was like, all right, cool. Cause it's kind of sentimental, you know, like I need to, I need to like talk to them, you know, if you, if I, if you guys can, it's like, I will, we'll try to do what we can. 
So the show was ending. Me and my girl were there and we saw that happen. You know, like them playing the songs and all the rest of their shit. It was just perfect. It was a great show. Yeah. And I went to their merch. I bought, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. I bought uh, two 45 inch singles. One was Isn't Any Wonder. And the other one was, uh, what was the other one? Uh, Cruising. You know, this cruising to the park. Cruising in the park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a yeah. good song. The Span they did a, they did a little mini Spanish version of that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I that, thought that the was Spanish one sick. was dope. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got those and I'm like, okay, if if I do meet one of them or all of them, I want them to sign these two. So I went and I went to go and check, and then yeah, they gave me the green light on one of them. And it was Aaron who did mm-hmm. is in any wonder. Yeah. And he came out and he was so cool. He was like, Oh, Hey man, how you doing? And I got a picture of him signing, uh, the, the 45 inch, uh, record. And, and I told him the story, you know, like about my brother, like he introduced me to them and everything. And he's like, Oh, you know, and I feel, it's great to, even though he's passed now that he still left on this legacy for you to yeah, like, hear us out and everything. Yeah. And, and it's like, yeah, no matter what, when I hear this song, I'm always going to remember him. But sadly I didn't buy this record for me. Right. And he's like, I was like, Oh, okay. He's like, I bought it for my mom because my mom knows that he, that was, that was his favorite song. Yeah. And I got the cruising in the park one and I got him to sign it. And I was like, this is going to be for my mom. So I, I you know, I, I want to thank you for this and everything. He shook my hand and everything. And I was like, all right, cool, man. So I was like, I only got to meet him, but if it wasn't for my buddy Earl and Aaron's brother, Sergio, I would not have met him. So Dude, shout out to Earl and Sergio. Yeah, seriously. Dude, that's dope. That is, that is crazy, man. Yeah. I like them. They, I, I had originally bought tickets for them. They were going to be at uh, Berkeley. Okay. And then yeah. they ended up canceling because of COVID. And yeah. they just released their new their new uh showings, their schedule. Mm-hmm. And it's like it's not on there. And I was like, ah, it's like I right, whatever. <laughs> and like the next one, whenever they do the next one, I'll uh because right now they're coming out with like the disco vibe type of music right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, like, yeah, I'm kind of digging cool. it. Yeah, I kind of too. It, yeah. I kind of like the the older stuff more, but that, that yeah. disco version is not not too crazy. But um, before we finish, man, I wanted to touch a little bit on um, I spoke to you that you there's times where you can you're connected with uh, with energies and you can see. So are you like the sixth sense? Do you see dead people? Or can you speak to them, or <laughs> oh, man, can you talk to you or what is it? So actually, I've actually had this type of ability since I was a kid. Would you call um, it a gift? It. it it is in some ways is also a kind of like feels like a curse to it too at the same time, because uh, I started developing this kind of like seeing things like shadows and all this stuff when I was younger at my old house. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I would see like things peeping behind the couch and, and like an actual shadow form, dude, like the things that you see on TV that look like full body like form and anim- a full body form dude like yeah. exactly like that and like it, it was just so weird and scary at the same time because like i was just younger i didn't know i didn't understand it and to a point and johnny would know this one exactly because like every time i told him some things about like stuff that i experienced he kind of freaks out about it but then he's he's always been my connection to like talking with mm-hmm. this kind of spar- uh, paranormal shit. And um, I had my old house, I had uh, a spirits, two spirits that live in, in there in my room and was an old man that uh, committed suicide there and his dog died too. Like he shot his dog and he shot himself. And sometimes I would feel uh, someone sitting on the edge of my bed all the time when I was growing up there and I lived in that house for like 14 years and I've yeah. 14 years. I've been seeing a lot of stuff and it started growing up when I started in high school, it started getting more advanced 
like I start seeing a lot of stuff because I, sometimes I would walk, uh, me and Johnny will walk one way together and sometimes we'll walk separate or just different times because I was in the sports and doing a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and Johnny was just out doing his own thing. And uh, we passed by like the cemetery sometimes and I would see some shit there. I was like, dude, like that's fucking crazy. There's someone there. And he's like, I don't see shit. I'm like, dude, there's someone there. And I told him one time that there was someone in his room, his old room. And he's like, he didn't believe it. He's like, just shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear it. And I guess he had a bad <laughs> <Yeah>. dream. <laughs> he had a bad dream that night too, saying yeah. that, uh, 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 what was it? Uh, there was a tree outside and he saw the reflection of it from the lighting uh -huh. from the street light. And it looked like a hand, right? And he said he saw it move kind of like just close up to him and, and he freaked out. And I don't know if it was like, if he was awake or he was dreaming, but he was freaking out. And he's like, ever since you fucking came in my life, shit's been going on <laughs> weird. But yeah, dude, I, I started getting more into this whole paranormal stuff and it wasn't about like, oh, it was cool and everything. I mean, yeah, it became cool, but yeah. like I had to because I was starting to see things and it was just pretty crazy. Like I would have dreams about other people's lives and somehow they'll be in the news, either dead or they did the killings or it'll be just other things. And what the, the crazy experience that I had uh, was knowing for the fact someone died mm -hmm. and it was uh this is uh this was for Aaron actually uh it's uh one of his dogs uh passed away and I knew about the dog was being sick but the last time I remembered the dog was getting treated and I had a dream that I was in bed and that this animal that turned out to be a cat and it was a black cat and it was like all like with me and everything and didn't like anyone else and i was like mm. okay kind of trippy and then you know like i remember someone uh my girlfriend in my dream was telling me like why is that pet always like you more than anyone else you know it doesn't like anyone else so i was like i don't know it just likes me and i woke up and tripping out and then i got a message from aaron saying hey uh ginger passed away and i'm like oh fuck <laughs> so yeah. like i had i had that encounter with the spirit of the dog because that dog didn't like men at all she didn't like men at all but mm. somehow like she liked me like she was always she would be cool with me and everything especially if she sees that i'm offering friendship right and yeah she was just really cool with me and for the fact that it happened, I was like just tripping out. I didn't say anything to Aaron because like he's a very skeptical person. So it's like he wouldn't believe anything or what yeah. I had to say. But yet now I told I told him during that time that happened, he was like just tripping out and his mom tripped out and she's like, You're right. You know, Ginger liked you a lot. You know, that's correct, you know, and for the fact that you had a thing like that, you know, it's kind of connected. And it just happens, dude. Honestly. Uh, I don't know if you were listening to that episode where I um, identified uh, two two spirits that are, were staying at my girlfriend's house. I don't know if you saw that episode or not, or heard that episode. But um, uh, no, I don't think I did. <clears throat> so my girlfriend is an RN uh, nurse for Sutter Health, okay. and um, she goes to people's homes and she takes care of them, and you know, like putting fixing up their wounds or checking up on them, you know, typical little short sweet and then getting out. Mm -hmm. And she had a couple of uh, patients that were really nice to her. They gave her like a picture of drawings that, because one of them was an artist. The other was uh, an author for writing a book about Watsonville and Santa Cruz and all this, all these cool things. And, um, one day it was just like she was upstairs at her house and she was taking a shower and I was sitting in the living room and the, and her TV was just off and the lighting were on and I was just sitting back just chilling right and 
I'm starting to see these like figures. And you know, when the light reflects off of things from yeah. behind this TV or on the side, you kind of see what's behind you. So it's like a gateway mirror. And I start seeing these two people. And I just, and I talk to them, like, what are you guys doing here? You know, like, and I would hear it a little bit, whatever that they want me to hear, I would hear. And I heard what they were saying. They were sad or all this stuff. So I was like kind of tripping out on it. It's like, okay. And then my girlfriend came down and she was just like, you know, like whatever. And I was like, all right, you want to come to my house? And she's like, yeah. Before that day happened, my girlfriend got uh, those those ring cameras. Mm-hmm. She had them inside her house and she has one uh, ring doorbell. Okay. So she has like one looking in the house, garage and outside. And every time she would leave for work or goes to bed, the the camera will go on once they see movement. So after the movement of her getting out of the way, it still records like another five or 10, 10 seconds left. And after the lights dim out to the point of uh, night vision, Mm-hmm. You start seeing these orbs flying around different ways, coming from from the stairs or where she was at, all that stuff. And she would notice that during that week, she's been having a lot of an emotional things. Like she doesn't know why she's sad. She doesn't know why and she would cry at night. And I'm like, how come you're barely telling me this now? Like, what's going on? So after being at that house and seeing those spirits. I knew something was up. It's like, okay, one of them I detected was really sad. So I was like, okay, maybe this is the, the, the entity that's making her feel this way. And I have to do something about it. So after my studies of trying to like talk with the, the paranormal and, and everything, I, I tried to work with it. I'm not a professional, but I know a little bit of what I need to do. Yeah. You know, your, your way around it. Yeah. And I got her here. I sat down and I stood up and she was like, why are you still standing? And I was like, cause I got something to tell you. And I told her about these spirits that, you know, the, um, you have two spirits living with you. They're, are, they're attached to you because the reason why I said they're attached to you is because they're in here in my house right now. And she's like, what are you talking about? So I just start describing these people, these two people, like all the way down to what they, what they're wearing, what color shirts, Mm -hmm. glasses or anything like that. First one I described was a man, an elderly man, home care, uh, combed to the side, old school style, not, not greased up, but just flattened. Yeah. Uh, Gray hair, glasses, kind of bifocal, wearing like a plaid shirt and everything. And she's like tripping out. And then I described the woman. It's like, yeah, woman, uh, stringy type of blonde, beach, dirty blonde hair, all this kind of stuff, all the way down to what she was wearing and how tall she was. She was like freaking out more and she was just quiet. And I'm like, are you okay? So she goes to her phone and she finds these two people, the obituaries. And she said, does this look like the guy? Mm-hmm. Like, that's exactly who it is. And, and, and after I said, that's exactly who it is. And that he said that you used to take care of him. And she's like, he was one of my patients. Yeah. He was the one that was a really nice guy and everything else. And she showed me the woman. I'm like, yeah, that's her. She said she drew something for you. And she's like, I didn't tell you that shit. How the fuck do you know about that? And she's like, she drew you a pottery of flowers and everything. And she started crying. And I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, I didn't tell you about that. And you got that right. And she's like, that was one of the ladies that was really nice to me and everything and all this stuff. And it's like, it just blew her mind. (laughs) Yeah. Like she just like, just tripped out like crazy, man. And I'm like, they're only attached to you because they know what you did. You were there taking care of them. So they seek, you know, a reinsurance with you, but they didn't understand how their presence being around you can affect you. 
Mm-hmm. So that's why you're always sad. That's why you're you're confused. You know all this stuff, and she's like just tripping out. So I told her, you need to say their your goodbyes to them, so that way they understand. You know that they're dead, and 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 they need to hear it from you. And they did. She talked, and I told them things like, "You guys need to move on." You guys need to go on to your loved ones. Go to the house. If there's no one there that's that you don't recognize, then maybe it's time that you should go somewhere else. Yeah. You know, go on to the beyond. All these kind the of things, man. Yeah, get the closure from it. And she got her closure, my girl. And then and for them, they did too. And then after that night, I got Paulo Santo uh, scared wood. Mm-hmm. And I and I have stacks of them and even the stage with it. And I will go around her with it and all this black smoke that turned into light. It's like you just released all that stuff and they are releasing you. So I did all these things with her and it took her a while to really like get off this stuff because it's kind of like glitter, you know, like when a, when a spirit is attached to you is like glitter. You can't you have a hard time getting off. Mm-hmm. And when you when it's off, you kind of feel like a residue of it, you know. And that's what it was for her. She had a hard time with it. And after I we did the whole closure thing, it took her like at least two or three hours to really like get back to normal, you know, to be like, oh, you know, talking and everything. Yeah. And after that time, when I saw that, I'm like, Are you feeling okay? She's like, Yeah. Like, there you go. That's, That's what you need. crazy. <laughs> I remember, I remember seeing one of your guys' episodes with you and you and uh, you and Aaron, and I remember uh, watching watching his screen as he's talking to you, and something, some like a little white little orb looking thing goes across his face, and then uh, it starts like floating above his the right his right hand side, and yeah. then it goes away, and then he freaks out and he's like he's looking around. And then you're like, you saw that, right? And then I was like, dude, I saw that. <laughs> I was like, I saw that. And then he's just like, what? He's like, like I felt like something just shook, like the house shook. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then I'm, I'm like yelling at the thing. I was like, nah, bro, there was something there. Like I saw it. There's something floating right next to you. So I remember when yeah. I met you guys, you guys were talking about that. And Johnny, I remember Johnny was like, man, I don't talk about that stuff here, man, because you're gonna bring it here. And then. Yeah, we're, we're talking about the group of people that arrived at the the area where, oh, we, were, yeah. where we were filming, and so yeah. that's what I remember. And then when I saw that in in, uh, in, in your guys' episode, I was like, "Dude, that's a trip!" Like I saw it, and I and I, I just see people talking about, "Oh, it's just a, a speck of dust or something that catches the light the right way." I'm like, "Okay, yeah, that could be good. That could be it." But the, you can tell when something is a speck of of dust because yeah. it's kind of blurryish and it, it looks flat. When and just, they have a flow. They have a flow. Right. This when I you saw know. it, at least, I don't know how it looked in your image, but when I saw it from here, it literally floated across his face and then just started like orbiting around. He had like a cup or something in, in on the desk. It started yeah. orbiting. And then when he realized it, it went away. Yeah, yeah. Like it orbs have like a like a dancing style, like you mm-hmm. know, like a bag like a plastic bag with, with wind, you know, it, yeah. it, it, it flies around, it drifts, it, it does all these weird things. Dust always have a flow. They always just have a beam of things, especially like if you're, if it's really bright outside and you have the curtains out open and you see that the beam of light, you will see dust, but they were yeah. all floating mm-hmm. into traffic the same way, right. you know? And, and with that one, he still doesn't believe it to this day. <laughs> But like it's funny because like he he talked about his girlfriend having like experiences stuff too and uh because he did he did it he talked about another thing I don't know if we did it live or not but he talked about his girlfriend had another experience that she freaked out at night and she saw something and she screamed and all mm-hmm. this stuff and then Monday he told me that she heard something again so Aaron moved rooms right from his upstairs down to the bomb stair to where his uh, shooting session is at. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was saying that, yeah, apparently uh, she heard more stuff happening last night. I'm like, what happened? And she's like, she heard someone walking up the steps and nobody was there. And I'm like, 
Yeah, that's because that's probably because they're looking for somebody, you know, like yeah. So since it's it's a new way of where she's at now, they're probably like looking for her. That's why I told them like she might have an attachment, you know, like she might have something there, or you know, it could be just the house itself, or it could be uh Aaron's grandmother that she also recently passed away too it was like because after she passed away a week that's when we did that episode where I saw that orb mm-hmm. I was like you know it could be I think it might be your grandma dude like she's sh- she's shaking you up you know like saying that she's around yeah and you know he doesn't he's, he doesn't believe it even if it's like right in front of his face of a ghost saying boo to him and it disappears right in front of him, he will still be skeptical all the way, you know? <laughs> well, well, you know what? I saw it. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, I you're saw the, it, dude. You, dude. You're the only one. There was other people that commented because he posted that on Facebook uh-huh. and Instagram and other people like, I see it too. I'm yeah. Like, see? <laughs> yeah. It, it was caught perfectly on the camera. I, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 re- I re- rewind it. I saw it like four or five times. And I'm like, that's definitely not not a speck of dust. There's, it's not, yeah. you know. And I was yeah. just like, yeah, that's that's such a trip, though, dude. But I mean, hey, like you said, it could be some good vibes, though, too. The grandma gave yeah. me some good vibes, and um, yeah, man, that's that's so crazy. But but you know what, man? It's 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 almost about that time. And I appreciate you coming on, man. We're gonna go ahead and uh, shout out your 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 band here. You guys will be performing tomorrow at what time? uh tomorrow the show starts at nine o'clock we'll probably be performing around 9 30 or else 10 depending on the first band when they want to start okay. so it's just it's just really on their flow because they're the ones that started up this the show so it's really depending between 10 9 30 or 10 or maybe possibly 10 30 all right guys so you guys three. heard it first you guys might as well start lining up since tonight because that's gonna get <laughs> popping over there Make sure you guys head out to the Blue Lagoon in Santa Cruz, California. He's going to be performing there. What else you got going on for yourself, man? Uh, as of right now, it's just music, uh, just doing the whole shows and hopefully get into recording. Uh, we did get hit up by a, a band from Boston uh, okay. that's going to be playing in Santa Cruz. So they invited us to play with them, and we all agreed to that one. So that's going to be coming up sometime soon possibly either in uh i think it's in december that's okay. gonna happen so that's the next show so you guys got your shows coming up and then you guys just you guys just uploaded a, an episode today uh today right you posted the uh, yeah the cinema, the cinema space, space. Pod, cinema space podcast with aaron with uh with paul aaron and is caesar in that one or no no caesar couldn't and make then, it and then johnny's one. not in that one either right yeah 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 okay so it's just it's, it's just gonna be paul and aaron are gonna be on that one Make sure you guys tune in make sure you guys go watch the first Halloween and then the 2018 one and then this one. So you guys can can figure it out. It's going to be that's at least that's what I'm going to be doing. And uh, we're going to wait on to see when uh, when Paul here is going to start his guitar lessons on YouTube. Make sure you tune in <laughs> and uh, maybe he's going to start his own uh, ghost. What is it? Ghost Adventures? Ghost Catcher? What was that show that was on for a while? Ghost Adventures. Uh, ghost uh damn, ghost hunters ghost hunters ghost hunters <laughs> there you go you're gonna get the new series of ghost hunters coming up on youtube maybe on peacock one day <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> maybe we could do we'll, we'll do another episode of just me explaining all that whole paranormal stuff because i got a lot of oh dude I, w- I would love it dude because there, there's been some stuff that that when my grandfather passed away about yeah. a couple of days before he did i had a dream of a black crow and it wouldn't leave me alone and mm-hmm. and then a couple of days later, my grandfather passed away. And then, um, sometime after that, before my uncle passed away, there I had another dream of a bl- of a of a black crow that would not. Yeah. Well, I mean, aren't all crows black? Anyways, yeah. but it was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like the crow was uh, was just following me, man. And he would and he would fly. And then if I would stop, he would stop midair, and he would never he wouldn't leave my side. And then a couple of days later, my uncle passed away and yeah so it's 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 a trip you know and so i would definitely whenever you're down dude if you want to do it here if you want to do it on a different podcast or if you want to just sit down and chat it up dude i'm more than willing to listen to that stuff yeah i'm down for the for your podcast man because i know aaron won't really tolerate with that shit so (laughs) and johnny 
Johnny is very scared. I mean, you saw that in person already when yeah, you yeah, saw yeah. that group of people. He's like, don't bring that shit here. Don't say that shit, Paul. Shut up, Paul. Shut up, Paul. Like, he yeah, knows because yeah, yeah. I did that with him last time and he got freaking scared out. So I was like, yeah, yeah. all right. I won't, I won't say that. I'm not going to lie. I thought that was actually what was happening when I saw that whole group of people showing up and you yeah, were yeah. mentioning it. And I was like, that actually seems like that might be true. Dude, so, so, so it was funny. I told the guys afterwards, but since you weren't around up until now, like, yeah. I'll tell you. Uh, so after I was saying, oh, that's a coven, you know, you guys got to be careful and all this stuff. Don't, you know, just be like all that stuff. Right. When I started the car, uh, a song came on, um, uh, called, uh, a cult from the band Slayer. Okay. And, yeah. and it, it's a, and if you're familiar with Slayer, <laughs> man, <laughs> they're, they're all about that cult, kind of like cult and anti-God shit and everything. Right. And this, and the, and the fact that I said, this is a cult, this is the coven right here. And the fact that angel, uh, angel that, uh, Slayer's cult, the song track called uh, cult came mm -hmm. on. I was like, Oh, okay. There it's you go. Sign. They're, 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 That's a you're sign. getting affirmation for that one. Yeah. So the universe yeah, told me I was correct. <laughs> there you go. See, the universe is on your side telling you what's going on. And with that, the universe is telling me that this is going to be it for today, man. I really appreciate you coming on. This was your host, Eduardo, with my very special guest, Paul Conway. Y'all have a good one. Peace. Later.